A few documentaries have spoken about the plausible discovery of the Americas by various peoples before Columbus. However, a potential African discovery is seldom entertained in popular discourse. Though many scholars remain skeptical, there is one piece of evidence presented by an African king that has been hard to ignore. And it wasn't necessarily the extravagant story he presented that was convincing, but a particular detail that demonstrated oddly specific knowledge regarding the characteristics of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and contributing to this content. The link to Patreon is in the description box below. Also, stay tuned with a word from my sponsors. Hello, my name is Howard Dorsey. I'm 54 years old. I'm here to talk about my uh, experience with herbal results. Um, I was getting sick, so I, I went to the doctor and they told me that um, my blood pressure was high, my cholesterol was borderline or high, so I was very sick. You know, I thought I was, sometimes I thought I was dying at, at some point. And uh, I ordered a bottle of olive leaf extract. This is, this is how the bottle comes in. And within the first probably week and a half, two weeks, I checked my blood pressure and it was back down to normal. It was like 120 over 80. My cholesterol went down to uh, 125. You know, I definitely believe that olive leaf extract from Herbal Results saved my life. And I, that's real. I mean, I, 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 and I recommend it to everyone in my family, my friends, and we've seen a lot of results in that, in that manner as well. Purchase now at herbalresults.net. To begin, the only group of Africans who have been seriously considered as candidates for Atlantic maritime exploration were the Mandaka people of the Mali Empire. Undoubtedly, the only reason scholars have considered it is because of how Manzi Musa described his ascension to the throne, which details a previous ruler ostensibly abdicating the throne and sailing the Atlantic Ocean. Now, although this story is a documented fact, we can't conclusively say that the Mandinka or Mande peoples successfully reached the Americas. The nature of the written evidence is only speculative. Thus, this video will be presenting some opinion-based speculation as well, so please keep that in mind. Though most scholars aren't convinced that Africans discovered the New World, some are more open to the idea that Manza Musa may have been telling the truth about a previous African ruler who sailed the Atlantic well before Columbus. Academic concern about the success of the journey in this case is irrelevant. So what makes Manza Musa's story of imperial maritime exploration so undeniable that scholars are forced to consider it? Well, let's start from the beginning and analyze the king's words for ourselves. Most of us know the story. Mali was perhaps the greatest empire West Africa had ever seen. It produced the world-renowned city of Timbuktu, massive amounts of wealth, and a legendary king who literally brought it to the attention of the known world for the first time being included in the 1375 Catalan Atlas. As a devout Muslim, he took his journey to Mecca, and it was this journey that earned him global fame. His stop in Egypt is of particular interest because he brought in so much gold that it was devalued for quite some time. The monomania surrounding this one event catapulted him into legendary status. While in Egypt, on his way to Mecca, Manza Musa was staying in the Karafa district of Cairo, the governor of which was Abin Amir Hajib. Apparently, this Egyptian governor and the Malayan king quickly became friends. A friendship grew up between them, and this Sultan Musa told him a great deal about himself and his country and the people of the Sudan who were his neighbors. One of the things which he told him was that his country was very extensive and contiguous with the ocean. As they continued to speak and share information, the governor of Cairo asked the African king how he came to rule, and this is when the legendary story was told. Manza Musa proceeded to tell him, We belong to a house which hands on the kingship by inheritance. 
The king, who was my predecessor, did not believe that it was impossible to discover the furthest limit of the Atlantic Ocean and wished vehemently to do so. He equipped 200 ships filled with men and the same number equipped with gold, water, and provisions, enough to last them for years, and said to the man deputy to lead them, do not return until you reach the end of it or your provisions and water give out. They departed and a long time passed before anyone came back. Then one ship returned and we asked the captain what news they brought. He said, yes, O Sultan, we traveled for a long time until there appeared in the open sea a river with a powerful current. Mine was the last of those ships. The other ships went on ahead, but when they reached that place they did not return and no more was seen of them, and we do not know what became of them. As for me, I went about at once and did not enter that river. Manzamusa goes on to say that the ruler at the time did not believe the story, and so that same ruler set out himself with even more ships. After the king did not return, Manzamusa ascended the throne. Now the implication of the story is obvious. However, one scholar rightfully noted, despite the implication, that there is no mention of land discovery or a successful maritime mission. Some scholars question the legitimacy of Manzimusa's elaborate tale altogether, suggesting that it may have been a cover story for his possible usurper status. For whatever reason, he doesn't identify the previous ruler. This may or may not be significant. The idea here is that he usurped the throne and hid this information from the Egyptian governor via an Atlantic exploration fable. Despite this theory, some scholars are forced to remain open due to Manzimusa's accurate description of the Atlantic Ocean's characteristics. Michael Gomez presents the dilemma quite well. The absence of supporting evidence certainly gives pause, but on its own fails to generate skepticism sufficient to completely dismiss the possibility, as cooperation for one element of the story derives from oceanographic studies. In blaming the first voyage's failure on a river with a powerful current, the survivor seems to refer to the Canary Current, a year-round movement of water flowing south along the West African coast from what is now southern Morocco to Guinea, some 1,000 kilometers in width. It would have been difficult to miss. Why or how such an experience with its basis in observable verity would be included in a wholly fabricated story is therefore unclear. The probability that the canary current is referenced strongly suggests it was encountered. As Michael Gomez notes, therein lies the great dilemma for skeptics. Manzamusa's accurate description, likely in reference to the known canary current, is nearly impossible to dismiss. The Malayans, who facing the Canary Current as amateur explorers, would have found it a daunting task. It's no wonder why one of the seafaring vessels decided to return. John Thornton tells us that even experienced seamen sometimes fail to navigate the Atlantic. The Atlantic Ocean has strong, consistent currents that run through it, and no sailor can ignore these. Sailing ships are not at liberty to go anywhere they can plot on a map even when the intricacies of Atlantic navigation were known in the 17th century, winds could ruin voyages. The case of the Black Bess, an English ship cruising the Caribbean in 1625, is one of many examples, as it was unable to complete its plans to land in Cuba, even though the shore was in sight. Skepticism over the success of the African mission regarding any discovery of land is warranted. However, Rejecting the possibility of Malayan Atlantic exploration before Columbus has become an increasingly difficult task. Manza Musa's proclamation of a river with a powerful current existing in the Atlantic Ocean is entirely too specific and in no simple way can be dismissed as an invention. For example, if his story were to be an invention, there were several other excuses available that could have buttressed his tall tale, such as the ships sank due to weather, or they ran out of food, disease spread through the ranks, or even mutiny. But a river flowing through the ocean sounds quite bizarre. Perhaps this was precisely why the ruler at the time didn't believe the deputy 
and set out again with even more ships. Anyway, in the comments below, be sure to let me know your thoughts on Manzamusa's description of the Atlantic Ocean, and if you think he was referring to the Canary Current. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.